Now I pull that thing all the way back. And here you go, that's the sear. Set the sear pin aside. The sear aside. And the ear haven't fallen out yet. And the reason why is because the disconnector is pulling onto the the, the ears um shaft like on the and if you view the back of the gun again without the sear and the sear pin uh, I know this is going slow, I don't know uh, how to do video, so bear with me. That's the, the ear thing I'm talking about at the bottom, at the top is the disconnector. Now, if you if I push on the disconnector, it's going to move the, the ear thing at the bottom. And at home you can get a better idea of how they engage if you look closer than the video. So to get that out, push down on the disconnector here. And you can see how the thing at the bottom moves with it. If I flip the gun leaning to the left side, it'll fall. So there we go. Let me record it. Okay, fell to the bottom to the bottom. Now set the gun aside carefully because things in there can fall out now. And this is the the piece that I call an ear because it looks like an ear in a way. The correct way for it to go into the gun is like this, with the shaft shoving into the right and into the hole in the disconnected base. This tab here for a uh, factory WA leaf spring, three leaves. It's not supposed to touch, uh, I mean, uh, no, no spring is supposed to push onto it. And the sear when, and, you know, inside the, uh, the frame will be right beside the ear here like that. The, the three leaf spring, the, the middle leaf of the three leaf spring will push on the sear tab, on the sear only. Okay, um, under normal operation, the tabs, the sears tab will be in front of the ear, ears tab, and when you, when you pull the trigger, the trigger bolt would push onto the whole piece and flip the top backwards, so the sharp end of the sear disengages from the hammer and the hammer strikes forward like that. The function of the disconnector that I call, you know, another piece of disconnector that I call the ear, it's when the slide moves back, it pushes down the right um, piece, the right, the, the silver piece on the right, and that in order pushes down this ear to clear, to clear the sear tap. And so when you push on the trigger ball, it won't engage the sear at all, and in turn won't you know engage the hammer down. So so um, you know you, you so when after the slide blows back uh, and you know load another BB, it won't fire immediately until you know the disconnector goes up again behind the the sear tab for a second shot. So if you can imagine if the the ear becomes dysfunctional or worn down, your gun will become full auto and this is the part that you want to fix if it ever becomes full auto or acts funny or fire fires twice or whatever. Okay, enough bullshit and set that aside. Alright. Now go back to the frame, there are two more parts that can jump out. That's the right side, the disconnector. You can take out the disconnector just like that, you know, take it out. And that's the disconnector. Set on the cloth. As you can see there's a... This is the hole for the, the ears shaft to go into when you're assembling the gun back. And if you turn the frame upside down, a spring from the right side under the disconnector will fall out and also the impact lock thingy will fall out, so hold on to it like that, that's the impact lock thing, put on the cloth, 
So there's only one way these pieces can go into the frame. So don't worry if you you know have it um, the wrong way. And then the spring, the small spring under the disconnector, it doesn't like to fall out with the loop. But anyway, if you can view it in the video, it's in there. That's the spring, the the round thing in there. The, I I don't really need to take that out. So you, if you want, you you know. But you don't need to take it out. Okay. And I can show you what I worked on in this um, full metal frame to make the gun work. Uh, first of all, the trigger slot, I had to widen it, you know, by falling. The trigger is a little too fat for the slot, so I had to widen the slot uh, right, right here. Where I have to make make the slot you know bigger for the trigger to move forward and backwards smoothly. Um, I also have to widen the the mat catch hole a little to make the mat catch smooth. Also on this side, mat catch again. Sand it down with fine grit paper, sandpaper, and um, what else did I work on? Uh, yeah. Um, the safety, uh, the the hole here for the for the uh, thumb safety to go through. As you can see, it's silver right in the black. I had to sand that down again to stop the safety in uh, smoothly. And the the trigger bolt. For some reason, uh, this particular PTC frame, a Kimber frame, a Kimber Marsoc frame, actually. Um, after I put the trigger in, the trigger sits correctly, but the bolt, it's a little bit too um, back. So what that does is, if you use a factory uh, beaver, like the grip safety, it will push uh, too hard onto the, the grip safety and won't let the disconnector to go back up again. So then, you know, my gun becomes either full auto or fire one shot, fail one shot, fire another shot, and fail another shot. For, you know, be, for the, when you fail the other shot, the disconnect it jumps back up and starts the cycle again. So if, you, if your gun acts weird and, and do this like alternating cycle, alternating shots, um, this is probably what's wrong. The, the bow is sitting too back and there's not enough room for the disconnector and sears to work correctly with the V-spring. Okay, so what I did, was to shave um, about one, um, I think most one millimeter of material off um, the first step of the grip safety. And where I shave, what I mean by first step is this step. This tiny, this step right here. I had to shave material off this in order to make enough room between the trigger bolt and the grip safety for the uh, disconnector to you know move up and down freely in order to, to cycle the gun so that's 